Okay, so the House Republicans seem to be off to a good start on energy. So now the question is, what next? Of course, the Bidens oppose every single thing they do. Let us ask our friend Senator John Hoven of North Dakota, who happens to be a member of the Senate Energy and Natural Resource Committee. Mr. Hoven, thank you, sir. So H.R. 21 got through today. So any more SPRO sales? By the way, there shouldn't be any more SPRO sales, but if there were, you'll increase the uh, federal, uh, you'll increase leasing rights on federal lands. Okay, that's good. Uh, I kind of like the um, earlier one, what, a week or two ago, protecting America's strategic petroleum reserve from China. I like that. By the way, that had a lot of bipartisan support. In both cases, sir, there's companion bills in the Senate, and I guess I was going to ask you what the outlook is for it. Right. Well, first off, good to be with you, Larry, and uh, you're, you're right on. Both are good pieces of legislation. We're pleased to see the House advance them, and there are companion bills in the Senate. Cruz has the one that uh, would restrict any uh, sale of oil to China. I think that's got the best chance uh, in the uh, Senate. I mean, how do you vote against it? And uh, so I'm hopeful we can put enough push uh, on our colleagues on the other side to get that to the floor and get it passed. That's got the best shot, I think. But the other one, uh, the other bill that passed today, as you mentioned, it only got one Democrat vote in, in the uh, House, so obviously that's a concern. Senator Barrasso has the companion bill in the Senate. He's the ranking member on energy. So I think we'll at least get a chance to have a hearing on it in energy. Can we get it across the floor? I don't know. But like you say, that's a really good one because it requires that if there's any further sales of oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, that there has to be a corresponding or greater uh, production domestically here at home. And, of course, that's the real solution is more production here at home. And, of course, that's what the Bidens continue to oppose, ignoring the election returns. They just will continue to oppose that. That's the fundamental problem in a nutshell, Larry. Uh, no question about it. I mean, oil right now, even though the Biden administration talks about, you know, what they've done to try to bring down oil prices, so on and so forth, it is a dollar higher today than when they came into office. We are producing less than when they came into office. And we're in a situation where the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, as you mentioned, with a $640 million Barrel capacity is down to about 370 million barrels. What happens if we need it now? And price, the oil prices are going back up, $86. Brent crude, $80 a barrel for WTI. That's going back up. That doesn't make it a very good situation for trying to fill it back up now, does it, for the administration to go out and try to buy barrels of oil to put in there? The last proffer that they put out did not get a response, which tells you they're going to have trouble filling it back up. You know, Senator Hoven, uh, with all that, um, two, two quick points. Number one, n I say this every night when we talk about it. Nowhere in the original enabling legislation for the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, which goes all the way back to the 1970s and the Arab oil mm -hmm. embargo, nowhere does it say, let us have political manipulation of gasoline prices. And the Bidens are now out there, Biden, Granholm, the energy secretary, bragging that the SPRO sales brought down gasoline prices. That is not the purpose of the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, point number one. Point number two, I have a chart. You can't, nobody can see it. Believe me, I got it from the Department of Energy, okay? The refined petroleum products affect, you know, like 200 products in American economic life. I mean, everything is affected by this. So your point, prices today are still way higher than they were two years ago, and that is damaging the middle class, and that is raising the inflation rate, and that is damaging our economy. And they don't get it. I mean, it, it permeates every, every clothing, uh, operating rooms, okay, pens and pencils, I think. I mean, I could go through a whole list. I will, I'll spare you for it. But there's like 200, class, 200 areas here that are affected by petroleum, and we need more of it. We need more of it. No question about it. It, it is a big driver of inflation, and obviously inflation is still a tremendous problem uh, for everyone across the board, but particularly, Larry, for lower-income people, that's who it hits the hardest. And every product that you can think of has an energy component in it. So again, it goes back to the domestic production, but there's so many other aspects as well. Think about the national security aspect. Think about the jobs and the economic impact as well. So all, 
you know, all those. And then, and then how about this? No one produces oil and gas in a more environmentally friendly way than where? Right here in the United States. So instead, we farm it out to OPEC and Russia that has vastly inferior environmental standards. There's nothing about that energy policy that makes sense. Um, Senator Hoven, once upon a time, I'm like reading a fairy tale story. Once upon a time, there was a Senate majority leader, his name was Schumer, who promised a senator from a coal producing state, his name was Joe Manchin, that there would be mm -hmm. a permitting bill. There would be a permitting bill, there would be a bill that provided pipelines. That promise still is unmet. Now, like most fairy tales, um, I don't think, unlike most fairy tales, I don't think this one's going to have a happy ending. I don't see any evidence that the White House or Schumer will permit, pardon the phrase, a permitting bill, a NEPA permitting bill that would open up all these opportunities. What are you hearing? What can you tell us, sir? No, I mean, right now, it looks like what you say is going to, in fact, be the case, which is really unfortunate because we need that permitting reform. I mean, if you really want to bring inflation down, produce more energy at home, you know, lift wages, get more people back to work, all these kind of things, permitting reform is a huge driver of that process. That was our chances to try to get some permitting reform, to get some of the Senate Democrats to hold the administration up on that. But instead, what happened with, as you're talking about, the infl so-called Inflation Reduction Act, that permitting reform wasn't there. Now, Senator Manchin has a bill, but it's not the bill that we need. It, there, there are a number of issues where it just doesn't get the permitting reform done the way it should, whether it's the FERC or some of these other issues. Shelly Moore Capital, Senator from, also from West Virginia, she has a, a bill that would work and that Republicans will support. And if, uh, as you said, uh, uh, Senator Schumer's willing to bring it forward, as he said he would, an actual permitting reform bill, there'll be a lot of uh, Republican support for it, but it's going to have to be something very close, if not the capital version. I, I thought, sir, when I grew up as a child, which was several centuries ago, that fairy tales had happy endings that Aesop's fables always had happy endings. But this permitting fairy tale does not look to have a happy ending. I'm just editorializing, yeah. Senator Hoven. It's just me. I know you're much younger, and you probably don't believe in fairy tales anymore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about that, but I know when you worked at the White House, I knew when I came up for working on some uh, economic issue, you were always right on time. All right, so we got to go. Senator John Hoban, yes. you're a terrific sport. Thank you, sir. We'll look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks.